Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here. My name is Andrew, coming to you from the beautiful Carolinas. Today's topic is going to be how your energy was drained by the narcissist. Think about that for a minute. Guys, if you like the content, please like, subscribe, and share. So your energy, what is this? This is what encompasses you. It is your spirit. It is your aura. Your energy is what you use to wake up in the morning to be a productive individual to contribute to society, to get from point A to point B. And each and every one of us has a limited amount of energy. We certainly do. Energy is yours throughout the time of your life. That's energy. Now, what does the narcissist want? They want your energy. They want to extract it from you. They want to take all of your resources from you, which includes, again, like I mentioned, your time, your money, your, your purpose, your social circle, your status, everything they want. But your energy, why the narcissist takes your energy, it's because when you're in the narcissistic relationship, many, many days you are consumed by the narcissist. Example, you are being gaslit or you're walking around on eggshells. You're thinking about the narcissist's next move. What are they going to do? Let's take the household for a minute. Say you were in, in a household with the narcissist and the narcissist was a matriarch or a patriarch. Well, what did you have to do there? Most likely you had to have a clean house or a clean room or do a lot of chores or errands or do things around the house to act like you were busy. Think about it. This is how the narcissist wants you. They want to consume your energy. So example, let's say that you would be home from school or you would come home or you had some downtime. Let's say you studied later in the afternoon and the narcissist wasn't home yet. Well, you knew by the time the narcissist would arrive home, let's say in a few hours, that you had to do your studying sometime, but also you had to, let's say, do laundry or do the dishes or rake the leaves or shovel snow or something. You had to do that because why? Because the narcissist wanted to consume your energy. And you may say, well, Andrew, they just wanted a clean house. I get it, we all want a clean house. But there's a big difference between doing something because it needs to be done Example, if, if you just had a massive snowfall, well, you have to shovel your driveway. Otherwise, you can't get to work or school. And doing something just because you can control someone to do it. In other words, having somebody do something just because you are in charge of the household. Understand the message. The narcissist, they wanted to consume your energy. They wanted to dictate from the minute you woke up until the minute you went to bed virtually every day what you did, who you did it with, how, when, where, what, why, all these kind of things, and they wanted information on you. The narcissist, why they drained your energy is because you realized eventually, let's say now that using that same example with the narcissist, let's say the narcissist went away for a few days uh, on vacation or whatever, they just, they weren't around. You could exhale. You could be like, oh my gosh, I don't have to do all these chores or all these errands, responsibilities around the house. Like, I'll just do them the day before this person gets back. Why? Because now you don't have to be consumed by the narcissist. You can do things in your time. You can slow down. And will these, will these tasks get done? Of course they will, but they didn't need to be done today. They could be done in three days when the narcissist returns. I hope you understand this. This is how the narcissist consumes your energy. This is why they deplete your energy because you're always thinking about what they're gonna do next. Are they gonna be pleased with your performance? Are they not? Did you buy the right peanut butter? Did you not? Did you turn off all the lights in the house or did you not? Are you paying attention to them when they're just literally berating you or giving you lip service when there's actually no substance or core to their words? Did you tune them out? When they texted you, did you respond ASAP immediately? Of course, you learned that quickly. You learned that when the narcissist either texted you or called you, that you had to reply as soon or answer as soon as you possibly could. Why? Again, because the narcissist wants to take your energy. They want to consume your energy. They want you waiting around thinking about them, thinking about what they are doing or aren't doing. This is exactly why these relationships are so draining because whether you are in a romantic relationship with the narcissist, it's your mom or dad, aunt, uncle, neighbor, if it's your brother, sister, coworker, somebody in a community or organization you're a member of, like a church or something, these relationships are really draining. Because now, let's take the religious organization as an example. Let's say you go to religion, a religious function every week or so, and you've identified that somebody is a narcissist, as an example. 
Well, now do you want to go to that function? Uh, not as much as you used to because you have to encounter this person. But now that person is now part of the community or the, or the, or the religious organization. So they go. And what do they, what do they do? They know when you go to service. So they will make sure they're there when you are to disrupt your energy. And if you try to change your patterns or habits or what time you go to church, believe me, they'll figure it out. And they will try to go to whatever ceremony or, or lecture or scripture reading that you're, you're attending. They'll try and do that because they're trying to drain your energy from you. And using that religious example, let's say you are going to a function every week and you know the narcissist is in that same building with you. Are you really present and paying attention to the services? Or are you more focused on the energy drain that is happening by the narcissist who is perhaps sitting a little bit further away from you? Understand what I'm telling you. There is a spiritual and an energetic connection with these individuals, unlike anything. And you know what I'm talking about. If you do, drop comments below. That's why many times when, when you're with the narcissist in their physical proximity, you feel drained. You feel something's quite, something's off. You can't quite figure it out. And you don't know what it is, but what it is is you're paying more attention to the narcissist than you are the event or whatever you're doing because you are constantly being judged. You're constantly being competed with. You're constantly being berated or looked down upon or not given credit. This is how it is. And eventually what happens in these relationships is you figure out, well, it's better off to not say anything, to do what this person wants me to do, which is the narcissist, get it done, check it off the list, have a little bit of peace and quiet on my own. And then let's see what tomorrow brings. That's what happens because remember, when you put up a boundary, when you're in these narcissistic relationships and you don't know what you're up against, when you put up a boundary or say the magic word, no, batten down the hatches because it's gonna get nasty. The narcissist will turn on the not goodness, let's put it that way, and they will really do some damage. Perhaps it's the silent treatment, perhaps it's gaslighting or stonewalling, or perhaps they will have a rage fit, who knows? But remember, the narcissist does not like the word no. They like the word yes, of course. Can I do more for you? Is there something else you would like me to do for you? That's what they like. But when the narcissist, the energy was being drained from you when you were in the relationship, really think about it. Think about when you, go on, when you used to go on vacations with the narcissist. Did you have a kind, loving, beautiful vacation time? Maybe, but I doubt it. Most likely you had drama from the minute you jumped on whatever transportation you took to get it to whatever location you took to. And then boom, lo and behold, you checked into the hotel and that wasn't good enough. The food wasn't good enough. The narcissist was on one of their smartphones the whole time, not paying attention to you or paying more attention to the wait staff, et cetera. And then on day one of the vacation, after you've checked in and everything, you probably had a long agenda list of things to check off and of things to do. And what did the narcissist want? They wanted to control you. They didn't want you enjoying your vacation. That is why many times when you return from a vacation with a narcissist, you literally need a real vacation. Play that again, it's a fact. Because there's always drama with the narcissist. Remember, the narcissist likes nice, new, shiny objects, which could be people, locations, events, ceremonies, whatever. They like new, new, and new. And when they go on vacation, does the, nar does, do the narcissist, do they know that they're gonna disrupt the energy and blow up parts of that vacation? Absolutely. They do it every single time. That's why. Why do you think they do it on vacations, by the way? Why do you think they try and disrupt that? That's right, because the vacation isn't about the narcissist. It's about a location, or it's about an event you're going to attend, or a site you're going to see, or an experience or a culture. It's not about them. They're not in the forefront anymore. That's why they blow up all vacations and birthdays and holidays and celebrations and events. This is what they do. They're trying to steal your energy and disrupt your peace. Really get the message. This is how the narcissist thrives. So when your energy was being depleted throughout the whole relationship, eventually something was going to give. Either A, you were gonna get discarded most likely, or B, you were gonna break free from this relationship on your own because you realized it was really draining and it was really a lot of effort just to open the front door sometimes because you never knew what you were gonna get, Dr. Jekyll or Mr. Hyde, and you could cut the air with a knife. Remember those days? I know you do, not fun. Having said that, something has to give, and eventually something will give unless the third thing happens and you stay in the narcissistic fog or you continue to live with the narcissist or in their proximity. Having said all those things, the narcissist relationship was draining. It was draining from you the minute you met them until the minute you left them. That's exactly how it was. And once you've 
once you, let's say you were discarded as an example, if you were discarded, again, my heart goes out to you. And if you entered it on your own, my heart goes out to you. Both are challenging. But the point is once you removed yourself from the physical proximity of the relationship with the narcissist, what happened? Yes, you had a lot of healing to do. Yes, you had a lot of introspection. Yes, you had a lot of accountability and understanding. And you had to most likely practice radical acceptance and that you had to go through that relationship. And that's just what it was. That's just the way it is. But your energy slowly returned and doors began to open for you. Now, I'm not saying the day after the relationship ended, this happened. Absolutely not. You'll be on the healing path for a while. But in time, in your time, you will heal if you take the proper steps. But along that way on the healing path, you really do one thing, that, which is massive. You rediscover who you have always been. You see, that's when you enter the third version of you. The first version of you was before you met the narcissist. The second version of you was the individual in the narcissistic relationship. And the third is the best version of you, the one that is post-narcissistic relationship after you have healed, after you have processed everything, after you've discovered who you really are and perhaps healed childhood wounds and introspected. But all of these things I'm mentioning to you, your energy does return post-relationship. It will. And it will return with a flurry if you heal properly. Believe me when I tell you it will. The sky is the limit for you. The abundance is all within you. Your energy will return. And just like the sun that is setting behind me, when you are in the narcissistic relationship, the sun was setting on that relationship. I can tell you right now, you just didn't know it. You were working really hard for the narcissist while they were dishing out more and more poor behavior, ultimately looking for your replacement, the new supply most likely. But when the relationship did end and you, you processed things and healed and really took time and you invested in yourself, meditated, journaled, exercised, ate properly, you were drama free in a, in a drama free environment. When that happened or is happening, that's when you really find who you are. And that's when the abundance flourishes. That's when all the goodness comes out and it's all around you. Believe me when I tell you that's a fact. So that's why many times people, they say, wow, that when I'm with the narcissist, it's so draining. It's just so challenging. It is because that's how it's supposed to be. You just didn't know it. You believe that everybody on the planet or most people on the planet thought like you did. They don't, they never have, and they never will. And then you noticed a shift in energy when you were with the narcissist compared to when you were not. And then you were listening to more positive words, people telling you that they cared about you, people telling you that you should do what's best for you, people telling you to perhaps exit the relationship, etc. Now, I'm not suggesting listen to everybody. I'm saying listen to yourself. But what I will say is this before I close the video. If you've identified that the individual that you are in a relationship with is a narcissist or a toxic individual at the very least, and you, you don't feel good about yourself and you are having each and every day to wake up walking around on eggshells or being mistreated, I strongly suggest if you could exit that relationship to do so, at least minimize your exposure and or contact with the person or people. Gray rock if you can, but understand that there is so much abundance out there for you. There sincerely is. There's abundance for everybody, for the people that choose it, for the people that wanna build and create, not for the people that wanna tear down and destroy. So guys, that's the video. I hope you liked it. I loved doing it from the beautiful Carolinas. This is Andrew. Namaste. Have a great afternoon. Stay true, stay blessed. Continue to become awakened and aware and understand the energy was being drained from you by the narcissist throughout that whole relationship. That's why they were giving you the push-pull technique, taking you super high, dropping you super low, telling you they would call you at a certain time when they never did, texting you when they felt appropriate and not replying to your text because they didn't want to hanging up on you during during phone calls. There's so many things that happen and ultimately the smear campaign, I'm certain you experienced that. So guys, understand one thing, wherever you are on the planet, you are not alone. God bless you, I love you, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right, bye you guys. I'll see you, bye.